Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. And I'm answering question number seven from the June 2023 International A Level at Excel Mechanics M1 paper. This question here we have a mass, a car of mass 1200 kilograms towing a trailer of mass 600 kilograms up a straight road as shown in figure four. The road is inclined at an angle of alpha to the horizontal, where sine of alpha is equal to 1 over 12. The driving force produced by the engine of the car is 3,000 newtons. The car moves with acceleration at 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.75 meters per second squared. The non-gravitational resistance to the motion of the car is modeled as a constant force of magnitude 2r newtons. The trailer is modeled as a constant um, oh, sorry, so the, the resistance to motion on the trailer is modeled as a constant force of magnitude R newtons. The car and trailer are modeled as particles. The tow bar between the car and trailer is modeled as a light rod that is parallel to the to the uh, uh, direction of motion. Okay, so this, this rod is parallel to the road, basically. Um, using the model, show that the value of R is 60. Okay, so now... I'm going to put all the forces acting on this car and this trailer in this diagram over here. So you have the weight, okay, acting vertically downwards of both of them, right? So the weight of the, tra of the car was 1,200 kilograms, so that's 1,200 G newtons, 1,200 G newtons, and that's 600 G newtons. Okay, you have the reaction force acting upwards uh, perpendicular to the plane. I'm not going to actually draw them in right now because we don't actually need them, I think, in this question. But you have the driving force. I'll draw them in anyway, but I'm going to be careful what I call them because I normally call them R, but the R here is the resistance of motion. So we have the driving force, which is you know from the engine of the car, which is 3,000 3, newtons. Okay, that's 3,000 newtons, the driving force. You have the resistances to motion acting, okay, of course, against the motion. It's going up, so it's acting down. For the car, it's 2R newtons, and for the uh, trailer, it's R newtons. So that's 2R newtons, and that's 2R newtons and R newtons. Okay, and then we also have, what else? Um, okay, and as I said, we have the, the reaction force because in contact with the surface, but we don't really, I don't think we have to worry about these because we, we know the resistance forces anyway, which could be air resistance, frictional resistance, we don't know, but we've, we've been given the value of that as R. Now, I normally call these R, but I'm going to call it N this time, the normal reaction force. Okay, so that's N for the car and N for the trailer, right? Now, those are the forces acting upon this system, right? Um, now, what I'm going to do is we have to show that the value of R, okay, is 60, all right? So I'm going to, first of all, consider this as one particle. Consider as one object, one big object, the whole thing, okay? Because then I don't have to worry about the tension in the cable, okay, the, the rod between them. Now, a rod... Okay, it says it's a light rod. It acts just like a cable, just like a rope, a string. Okay, when, for example, the car is pulling the trailer. Okay, so the car is pulling the trailer up. So there's a force acting this way on the trailer. And the trailer is kind of, uh, you know, slowing the car down. You could say it's, it's making the effect of slowing it down. If it wasn't there, if the trailer wasn't there, if the rod wasn't holding uh, connecting these together, then the car would be able to go, you know, faster. So the car is being held back by the rod. Okay. So this is what's actually happening in terms of the tension inside um, the rod. Rod doesn't have thrust until, okay, um, the tra the car and the trailer have a tendency to be going towards each other. If the car puts the brakes on, for example, all right, and it was um, such that, that this this would have gone into the back of the car, okay, then 
you would then have the situation where you'd have thrust acting outwards in a rod, in a, in a string or rope, it wouldn't act outwards. So this is still tension in the cable, right? And why are they pointing in opposite directions as well? Um, here, this tension is, con I'm considering what's acting upon the car alone. And here, what's acting on the trailer alone, right? So if I consider this as one, one object, I don't have to worry about this tension in the cable, right? I don't have to watch it, worry about the tension in the rod at all. I can think of this as one block of, you know, something moving, as one big block with that, with that combined mass. So I can think of, you know, like this as one block, okay? One big block. And the total mass of this whole big block, I can think of as being... 1800 G okay so I can think of this as follows so this is 1800 G newtons acting down okay the driving force on the whole thing is 3000 newtons acting up so that's 3000 newtons and the total resistance to motion acting down is R plus 2R which is 3R so that's 3R acting down and you have your combined, you can say, reaction force. I can just call that N. Just call it N. I'm not going to call it R because there's R there. Right? So that way, that there we can ignore the tension in the cable. And the acceleration of the whole system is 0. Was it 0.75? Yeah, 0 0.75 meters per second squared. Okay, so the acceleration of this whole system is 0. 0.75 meters per second squared. All right, so what we can do now is we can uh, resolve the forces acting up the plane. Okay, we can say 3,000 minus 3R, and you got minus. Now, here is where we have to resolve the force. Okay, we have to resolve this force. Okay, this, um, this force, we have to resolve it perpendicular to the plane. Okay. So this has a component which is, uh, sorry, parallel to the plane. It has a component which is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, and this angle here, if this angle is alpha, this angle is also alpha. And we're told that sine of alpha is 1 over 12. Is that what we're told? Yeah. Okay. So here we have to resolve this 1800 G force in a direction which is parallel to the plane. Okay, parallel to the plane. So... In that case, this force has to be resolved in this direction, which is going away from the angle given. Or you can say, opposite the angle. Okay, in this direction, which is opposite the angle, for which case we'll say it's 1,800 G times sine of alpha. That is the force acting down the plane. So you're going to have 3,000 minus 3R minus 1,800 G times sine alpha. And that's equal to the mass of the object, the whole thing is 1,800 times its acceleration, which is 0 0.75. That's, a, that's the resultant force equals mass times acceleration. That's the resultant force equals a mass times acceleration. So that hopefully will be enough for, to, for us to find what R is, because we know sine alpha is 1 over 12, and we know G is 1.8. So if I rearrange this equation, okay, I'll have 3,000 minus 1,800 uh, times 9.8 times 1 over 12, so that's divided by 12. Okay, and I'll have minus 1,800 times 0 0.75 is equal to R, and all of this is divided by 3. All of this is divided by 3. Okay, just rearranging this. So therefore, we can say R is equal to, we can take the calculator and we can calculate the value of R, you can say this is going to have, we're going to have 3,000, okay, minus 1,800 times 9.8 over 12. That will be, that will be what that gives us, same thing. Minus, whoops, then minus 1,800 times 0 0.75. And all of that, all of that divided by three. And hopefully this will give us what we're looking for, 
which is 60, and it does. Okay, so this is R is equal to 60, so we've shown how R equals 60. Okay, this equation here is what you need to show, and then you see everything simplifies to R equals 60, and we've got our answer for question part A. Okay, so we know that we're correct because they told us to show that. So now part B. It says, um, find the tension in the tow bar. Okay, we've got to find the tension in the tow bar. So now we've got, to, we've got the tension here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider basically just... So when I'm finding the tension in the tow bar, I can consider just the trailer or just the car separately. They're all moving with the same acceleration. Okay, and, um, you know, I have the forces acting on, on this car except for the t tension in the tow bar. All right, and I have all the forces acting on the trailer except for the tension in the tow bar. So I could use either of them and I will get the same value of T. However, using the trailer would be more sensible because there's less forces acting on it and therefore I'll have to do less work to get the answer. So I'm going to concentrate on the trailer. Okay, so on the trailer we know that there's a tension in the tow bar. We, we know that the resistance to motion here is 60. It's R, one, just one R, which is 60. And we know that the weight of the trailer, okay, the weight of the trailer, okay, is 1,800. No, no, sorry, it's 600 G, okay, Newtons, okay. And if we resolve this force, in those two directions, horizontally and vertically. Okay. This angle here is alpha, remember? So this is 600 G sine alpha, and this is 600 G cosine alpha. We don't have to worry about this one. We also have the reaction force, which I'll draw in this color which we're not going to use here. And the reaction force, I'm going to call it, so we called it N, so I'll call it N. This is N for the trailer. All right, so now we can resolve forces going up the plane. We know this is accelerating like the rest of the system at 0 0.75 <clears throat> meters per second squared. So if we resolve the forces going up the plane, the forces T, the tension in the tow bar, which we have to find, okay, and we've got minus 600 G sine alpha minus 60 equals the mass, which is 600, times the acceleration, which is 0 0.75. Let me just make some space for that. Actually, a bit neater there. Okay, so <clears throat> we're only considering the forces acting on the trailer, so we don't worry about the driving force and all the stuff acting there. All of that will affect this tension in the end anyway. So it's all incorporated in the tension. But we're considering only the forces acting on the trailer alone. So T minus 600 G sine alpha minus 60 um, equals a mass, which is 600, times acceleration, which is 0 0.75. That should give us the value of T. So T is going to be 600 times 0 0.75 plus 600 times 9.8 over 12 plus 60. If I just rearrange that. So that should give us our value of T. So we have 600 times 0 0.75 plus we're going to have 600 times 9.8 divided by 12. And then we're going to have plus 60. And that gives us 1,000. So T equals 1,000 newtons. So there's the answer for part B the tension in the tow bar. Okay, then for part C, it says, when the car and trailer are moving at a speed of 12 meters per second, the tow bar breaks. Okay, um, given that the non-gravitational resistance to motion remain the same, remain unchanged, use the model to find the further distance moved by the trailer before it comes first comes to rest. So at, at the point where the speed is 12 meters per second, okay, what happens is the tension in the tow bar is gone because it breaks. The tow bar breaks. So there's no tension. There's no, this force is now gone, acting up. The only forces acting on this are basically its weight, the reaction force, 
and the resistance to motion. Okay, so you have its weight, which is 600 G newtons, the reaction force, which is, uh, sorry, the, the resistance to motion, which is R, and the reaction force, which is MT. Now, if we resolve this force, okay, again, parallel to the plane, as we mentioned before, it's going away from this angle, so we're going to use sine. We're going to use 600 times G sine alpha, okay, and the resistance to motion we know is 60, so R is 60, basically. We know that from last, from the first part of the question. So that's 60 newtons, okay? So those are the only forces now acting on this particle, on this object. There's no other forces acting on it. The, ten the tension in the tow bar is now gone. It's now separate from the car, and it's, there's only forces acting on it are slowing it down. So we have to work out its new acceleration. I can't say acceleration is 0 0.75 anymore. That's a big mistake that people make in questions like this. The situation has changed. The forces acting on it have changed. So we cannot, we cannot say that the acceleration is the same as the previous part of the question. It's different now. So we've got to work out that acceleration. And once we've got that acceleration, we can then continue. So the acceleration now, it's still moving up the plane. Okay, but it's slowing down. But I'm going to take up as positive, in which case I'll have negative 60. Take away 600 times um, G sine alpha is equal to the mass, which is um, 600 times the acceleration, which we have to find. So the acceleration, therefore, is negative 60 minus 600 times 9.8 times, okay, or, you could, or you could say over 12, divided by 600. Okay, so 600 times 9.8 divided by 12 over 600. So you, this will give you the acceleration, the new acceleration. So when we calculate that, you have negative 60 minus 60 minus 600 times 9.8 time, um, over 12. And all of that divided by 600. So that gives you minus 11 over 12. Okay, meters per second squared. Okay, so that's the acceleration of this particle. I think that's going to give us a, a recurring decimal. So leave it like this until we use it in a calculation. So that's the acceleration. So now we can use our SUVAT equations, because it's constant acceleration, to find out what they want, the distance that it moves. So we can say S is S, what we have to find. The initial speed was 12 meters per second at the time when... Um, the tow bar breaks, that's the initial speed. We're going to find the, uh, the distance it takes for it to come to rest, so that's going to be zero. Okay, when it stops, it's going to be zero. The acceleration is negative 11 over 12 meters per second squared. And the time, we don't know, um, but we don't need it because we're going to use here, we need to use an equation involving S, U, V, and A. So we can use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So this is zero equals 12 squared plus 2 times minus 11 over 12 times s. So if you rearrange this equation, you'll end up with s equals, you're going to have, um, this cancel with this, I'll keep it like that. So s equals 144, okay, times 6 over 11. Okay, because you, you're going to rearrange this, that'll become 144 times 6 over 11, that will become positive. So that will give you your answer. So you have 144. Let's make it as one fraction. 144 times 6 over 11, which gives us 864 over 11. Okay, that's going to be meters. So we'll round that to 3SF. It gives us what? 78.54. Continue 78.54 to the 78.5 meters to three significant figures. We can write it to 2SF because we use G in our calculations in you know in all of this, but no problem. We'll keep it to 3SF is the safer. In the beginning of the paper, it says if you use G, you can round to 3SF or 2SF. Both of those are accepted. That's fine. We'll stick to 3SF. Okay, so there's S equals 78.5 meters. And that answers this question. 
Okay, question number seven. Um, I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions you can find from this paper in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. Um, over here, you'll have a link to questions dealing with this topic, which is about connected particles. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel in, by cl clicking on this link. Um, and if you want to watch a video that tells you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for, you can watch the video that's linked over here. Thank you for watching. See you soon.